Since 2019, two little birds have captured a lot of hearts. They've inspired a book, a movie, and even a beer, and they've been spending their summers on a Lake Michigan beach in Chicago. About five miles north of downtown Chicago is a haven for birds and the humans who watch them. It's called Montrose Point Bird Sanctuary. Well, Montrose in particular is a special place. Um, you can't really get the kind of shots that you can get here. You're so close to the birds. They all funnel through here and uh, they come down much lower than you might see them in other places. He's gonna get in the water. Alex Handler is one of dozens of birders who flock to Montrose almost every day during the warmer months. There, a tightly knit group of citizen scientists who track the birds every move, gather useful data for documenting bird population growth and decline. It's really, uh, it's great. You kind of feel like you're contributing as well when you're, when you're out here. And while there are more than 350 different bird species living at the Montrose Point Bird Sanctuary, these two little birds have been getting all the attention in recent years. They are piping plovers. Their names, Monty and Rose. Monty and Rose have caused quite a stir within the bird watching community. Their mere presence inspired a documentary film and another one in the works. The filmmaker is Bob Dolgan, a lifelong birder. I think birds open us up to a whole nother world. I mean, you see a migratory bird species here in Chicago, that bird might be going all the way to the Arctic Circle in the summertime and then in the winter, go down to somewhere in South America. If we know more about birds, that just tells us so much more about the environment, about the challenges we have in terms of habitat loss, climate change, pollution, pesticides, you name it. And so birds are really a window into so many other issues. Dolgan says the story of Monty and Rose happened quickly and took everyone in the bird watching community by surprise. And so all of a sudden they were, they were scraping nests, uh, much to our astonishment and delight. And the story just took off from there. In the Great Lakes area, piping plovers are considered endangered and they hadn't been seen around Chicago since 1948. And so this was just an astonishing, um, an astonishing thing. And, and they're such a highly endangered species that it just, it was mind boggling that they would choose Chicago to nest. Their story begins in 2019, and it has been a journey filled with drama for these little birds, as illustrated by the movie. On June 12th, I came Rose was on the nest, you know, the four eggs had been laid and, and everything looked so peaceful. It looked like we were going to have um, a success, successful nesting experience. The birds were discovered mating on the beach by Tamima Itani with the Illinois Ornithological Society. She named them Monty and Rose and soon earned the nickname Plover Mother. As we started looking at the forecast for the rest of the day, it was high winds, torrential rains, but even more concerning, a strong storm surge from the lake. It, there was already a lot of water on the beach, and there was a good chance that the water would rise to cover the nest. I looked and saw the waves building on, on Lake Michigan. We knew we were in trouble. So they were calling for 35 to 40 mile an hour north winds. It was very distressing to me. The four eggs were removed around 6 p.m. that day. By the next morning, the nest was under a foot of water, so it was definitely the right decision to make. The eggs were carefully transferred to an incubator, but they did not survive. Just days later, a hopeful sign. Monty could be seen scraping another nest, this time further up the beach. And then one day we realized that they were interested in the volleyball court area, which is an area that makes so much sense from a nesting standpoint because it's high and dry. In all the storms that we had, that area wasn't underwater. The new nest in the sand, only about an inch deep, was protected by a metal cage to keep out predators, but the birds then faced another obstacle. An outdoor concert was being planned for Montrose Beach, 25,000 screaming fans would be dancing and bouncing in the sand just yards from where Monty and Rose were nesting. The two tiny birds were up against their biggest challenge yet. But after a lot of back and forth with the city and with concert promoters, 
The concert was canceled just one day after the chicks were hatched. Monty and Rose won. After they hatched and they started moving around, that probably was the most stressful time because basically they're these cute little fluff balls running around, but that's all they can do, run around. They can't fly, you know, their parents can only do so much to defend them. They were seen and photographed chasing gulls, chasing mallards. The two of them ganged up on a great blue heron and chased great blue heron. One of the chicks born to Monty and Rose in 2019 is now starting his own family. A bird named Nish has settled down with Nellie in Ohio. They are the first piping plovers to nest in that region in more than 80 years. The nesting site is at Maumee Bay State Park near Toledo. It's an encouraging sign, according to filmmaker Dolgan, because the plover population in the Great Lakes is highly endangered. There are only about uh, 70 pairs or so remaining. Uh, in the early 90s, the population dipped all the way down to just a dozen pairs, all in Michigan. And so just their very survival, persisting on a handful of beaches around the Great Lakes, there's just something really cool about that. Persistence in the face of disaster is simply a way of life for piping plovers. Predators are a constant threat. We learned during the taping of this segment that all four eggs at Montrose were eaten by a skunk that had reached into the metal cage protecting the nest. Undaunted by tragedy, the next day, there were signs that Monty and Rose were courting again. There he is. Monty and Rose have attracted a huge following. T-shirts and hats have been created. A children's book was published. And there's even a beer called Piping Plover Ale. Plus, the governor declared November 18th Illinois Piping Plover Day. To ensure the bird's safety, more than 200 volunteers work on a rotating schedule to keep a close watch on the birds almost around the clock. Oh, change it, change. I'm watching. Is it going to happen? Yes. Shift change. Shift change. Shift change. Rose is off duty. All right. I just want to get my notebooks. Come September, Monty and Rose fly south for the winter. Monty will fly to Texas while Rose heads to Florida. Then in the spring, they fly north to build a new nest all over again on the beach at Montrose. Last year they came on the same day and this year they came 24 hours apart. And how that's possible is a mystery. I mean, it is still one of these things that is little known as to how birds could possibly do that. I think these birds have been a tremendous, a tremendous ambassadors to birding, to birds, to having wildlife within your city. It's, it's a great story of engaging people and bringing them on board. Thanks for watching. For more on these stories and the Great Lakes in general, visit greatlakesnow.org. When you get there, you can follow us on social media or subscribe to our newsletter to get updates about our work. See you out on the lakes.